Hi, I'm Lonnie D. Mikis, back again with another forecast for the week of February 14th to the 20th. And of course, our forecasts are always uploaded onto our YouTube channel, Planetary Counter Astrology, every Friday. And come back and see us on Tuesdays when Ralph uploads the astro portraits for the week. And uh, this year, he's adding a few surprises. So uh, if you subscribe and you hit that bell, you'll get notifications when he posts his little extras. Uh, so he's a little bit jealous because I got to do the Chinese New Year last time. And now I get to have Valentine's Day, uh, which we bunnies think is a national holiday, yes. even though. They haven't gotten that word yet. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I forgot to mention that, uh, and I'm sure Ralph clarified it uh, in last week's forecast, but, you know, all of the planets are direct now. Uh, after uh, the 3rd of February, when Mercury went direct, it means that every single planet is in direct motion. And I had said that I was waiting for that week, the first week in February for a long time, because it just feels like a new beginning. It just feels like everything can move forward now because we've got this no impediments with the planets, you know, go changing directions or being retrograde to impede your thoughts and your progress. And together with the fact that so much is in Saturn rule signs, it's really a productive and effective time. We've got, you know, half the planets in, in, Capricorn, and then we have uh, Saturn her himself in Aquarius and other Saturn-ruled signs. So we've really got a lot of progress that we can match up with the intuition and idealism uh, of the planets that are in um, Pisces, which is Neptune and Jupiter. So mm -hmm. it's it's just a good time to feel optimism and direction come back into your life. So. Uh, we had a way to get through January to do that, but February, things are looking up, right? So why not start off with Valentine's Day, the 14th, which is a Monday. Uh, the moon has a short void overnight, but it shouldn't be problematic at all. And we've got the moon for Valentine's Day in the heartfelt sign of Leo. So that bodes well right away. And uh, Mercury is entering Aquarius. So of course, that's squaring the moon. But it's exciting. So look for an exciting Valentine's Day, right? Maybe something quirky with that that uh, Mercury, the quirky planet, entering Aquarius, the quirky sign. <laughs> the 15th is kind of a clear slate. It's that Tuesday. The moon in Leo, again, a heartfelt moon. Have your heart-to-heart -heart talks. Look at your, um, you know, emotions uh, that come up through the heart filter of Leo. Uh, we've got uh, nothing above the numbers, nothing above the line or below the line. Those two planets underneath the, the number, Uranus and Saturn, they're forming that T-square. You know, we've got that fixed square. Uh, Uranus is in Taurus and then uh, uh, Saturn is in Aquarius. So they're all squaring that moon in Leo. So it could be a day where some emotional stuff kind of challenges you a little bit, but uh, without anything else there to shake things up, uh, you should be, it should be a growth uh, experience for you if you want to take a chance to look at it through your heart. On the 16th, you'll notice that we have a little shadowed box around the 16th. We've been doing that so that the lunations will be easier to find when you're looking at the month grid. Uh, so the full moon and the new moon have these little shadow boxes around them. And the 16th is in fact the full moon. So we've got, uh, the moon in Leo and the, uh, sun is of course in Aquarius, uh, that full moon happens before one o'clock in the afternoon, because that's the time that the void ends. The void starts at eight. 56 a.m. in the morning, call it nine o'clock, uh, and ends almost one o'clock. So your whole morning is going to be this void, of course, moon with that full moon. So be aware, don't schedule any important meetings for that time. Realize that you might get challenges or 
uh, you know, any kind of uh, dynamics that you would associate with that full moon opposition uh, there. Although Mars and Venus are conjunct. So you might get a little bit of support or you might want to look for a little bit of support from a partner. And that can make that uh, whole full moon dynamic maybe a little bit easier. Um, we have the white circle that follows that day on the 17th, Thursday the 17th, with Jupiter sextile Uranus. That sounds exciting. I mean... <laughs> If you can get excited with Uranus and Taurus, that sounds exciting because that sextile with Jupiter just really kind of will expand your whole impetus that Uranus and in Taurus kind of defines. You know, we're we're really focusing on the Earth, changing, making changes for the health of the planet Earth. Uh, in this uh, Uranus and Taurus time. And so with Jupiter there, that's a big optimistic helping hand. Jupiter's not playing nicely with the moon in Virgo, but um, Uranus and Venus and Mars are all well aspected by that Virgo moon. So it looks like a good day to get things done, muster a group of people together. It's a social day with all the planets on the numbers. So take advantage of that white circle day to kick off a new project or a, a, a new uh, ideal. Then you'll see on Friday the 18th, we have like a little picket fence, somebody called it when they said, what's that little picket fence around that, that date? That is to highlight the fact that there is the the ingress of the sun into a new sign. In this case, the sun will be going into Pisces at 8.43 a.m. on the Pacific coast. Um, and so the moon is still in Virgo for just about all of the day. It's not till eight o'clock at night that it moves into Libra. The Voida course really kind of takes care of the afternoon. It's a good day, time, a good week to take the Friday off. If you have anything uh, that uh, you need to really concentrate on, it's not going to be uh, really easy to do that with that void, of course, because a void in, in Virgo is one that you will feel. Um, Virgo likes to be all organized and void, of course, not so much. So uh, don't plan anything for late in the day there. Saturday the 19th, that's a pretty clear slate. Libra moon, go do something artsy. Do something that you appreciate art or friendship or partnership. You know, the moon will help to support that with that mercury above there. Maybe it's with younger people. Maybe it's with children or grandchildren. Uh, nothing standing in your way. It looks like a lovely, lovely day for the 19th. That's Saturday. And then we end the week on Sunday with the moon still in Libra. So again, that nice balanced kind of friendly partnering energy is there, although uh, it's not um, aspecting Venus and Mars or Pluto very well. We've got that whole triumvirate in Capricorn and Libra and Capricorn are not, not necessarily the best of, uh, of friends. Um, but Saturn is uh, well aspected, so maybe you'll do a little bit of uh, uh, more organizational things on that Sunday. Maybe you'll try to uh, monitor a dispute between that Venus and Mars. So the moon goes void, of course, 9 o'clock that night, so it's a free slate for that Sunday. So that's the week. Come see us again on Planetary Calendar Astrology on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, we wish you would. It really helps us. And uh, if you haven't gotten your calendar, there's plenty available. We've got a lot of latecomers coming saying, Ack, I didn't realize it's February. I still need my calendar. We have plenty. We got you covered. Take care. <laughs>